everyone, welcome to another episode of the Translate Stars podcast. Um, today we have the honour of talking to Ike Eiting, who is um, the localization man- manager at Jimdo. So Ike, how are you today? I'm fine. I think I stood up with the wrong leg, but uh, when I got to the office, it was already good. So, Oh, great. Good. That's good to hear. Well, it's Thursday today. So yeah, we're only only two days away from the weekend. <laughs> okay, so um, as I mentioned, you're the localization manager at, at Jimdo. Um, but apart from your professional life, um, how would you define yourself? Who is Aiki? Um, how would I define myself uh, apart from professional? So I think um, I'm a very open, uh, creative, and curious person. I've always tried to investigate different areas uh, of interest, be it on the professional side or on the private side. So I tried painting. I, When I grew up, I tried different internships to explore what I want to be, ranging between interior decorator and, um, and other stuff. So um, always trying to be a bit creative uh, and also other stuff. I think I'm well organized, um, even though also, I have my chaotic side, so I think <laughs> I need some system of order, and that's why I have lots of to-do lists, but I also kind of um, lose focus very easily, so then I need to need them to, to prep them back up. Um, and also, I think people would say that I do have a sense of humor, but still, I'm more, um, more um, not... Um, so I'm more analytical and not so easily getting to laugh. So not the jokingly person, even though I do have a sense of humor. So, okay, okay. Um, and then going back to your position as your, your current position now, um, what I found really interesting when I was looking at your profile on LinkedIn was, um, you haven't followed um, what I think a lot of us in the language industry think is the traditional track into localization. Mm-hmm. The you know the, the the language studies and the work and then the the translation, um, working as a translator or working in house. So what was it that led you to focus on localization? So I think um, so I do have a language background, but not from a translator uh, perspective. Um, it was more an interest in languages. So I studied culture and I learned languages a lot. So I think there was a an interest in language, but what made me jump into this uh, direction uh, and career path was more um, my interest on in um, establishing processes uh, and organizing and uh, improving workflows. So that's a bit what I had been doing in the past. So I think I started with languages um, as an economics assistant with a focus on, on foreign languages. So more like a foreign language secretary. Uh, and when I studied languages, I worked a side job in a company in customer service. So uh, that's where I built a, a customer service background. And that led me to different positions where I established a role um, and then kind of set up processes and improved them and grew, grew them. So um, at Spreadshirt, that was uh, an area where you help people improving their images so that they look nice on printing on printed t-shirts. And at Jimdo, the first role that I had here was um, working in, as a customer supporter in a, a cross-functional development team that was focusing on payment processes and was looking for someone who built that intermediate position, uh, speaking to payment providers, uh, developers, customer service, and end customers. So that's what I did. Um, I then led the customer service teams for a while. And that was also a role that didn't exist at that point in time. So that was when Jimdo was growing and uh, we were trying to build a big international support team, which before was uh, a German speaking customer service team and kind of country teams who were all also doing a bit of support, but were more cross-functional with someone doing press, online marketing, and all of them doing a bit of customer service. So uh, I was the first head of support in that position um, and kind of brought them all under a big international support team, uh, but also found that quite challenging in the sense that it was a very 
high level and uh, a big group of people uh, to take care of. So at the end, I felt very stressed out. And um, when I became pregnant, I was very sure that I didn't want to return to the same position again. So okay. in coming, back, there was a bit the question, of course, then, okay, what, what is there to do? And since the translation process was always a bit self-organized or wild, <laughs> Um, that was a, a touch point where Jimdo asked me if I would like to um, look at this process and establish the role of a localization manager there. So uh, that's how I entered uh, the, the localization manager role. Okay, so so you're the first person in the company then to, to have taken yeah. up that role? Yeah, first and so far only person uh, of doing this year. <laughs> okay, so... Um... Just to, to kind of situate people who are listening, who are maybe aren't very familiar with um, the localization process, um, could you kind of explain what you see is the difference between your role as a localization manager and the role of, say, a translation project manager? Because obviously within your workflow, I imagine you have translators. Um, yeah. Is there a person that manages them separately or...? How, no, does, how, how does the workflow function? I'm, I'm moving into that direction at the moment to actually uh, delegate that part uh, of, uh, of the process. But so far, I've been doing that as well. And that's also where I would see the main difference between a translation project manager who focuses more on the coordinating um, uh, projects, uh, whereas the, as a localization manager, I have the full process in mind, and my focus is more, or uh, I would like to focus more on um, establishing the structure um, so that the workflows with the collaborating teams runs fine, or that the uh, way how we use the localization software uh, is standardized in a good way, and that the task reaches in the, in the most easiest. Whereas, whereas I see the translation project manager focusing on the on the projects that we need uh, to translate yeah so so your what you were describing at the beginning is you know you said you're a very organized person and you like to, to put processes into place I imagine that this role suits you quite well then yeah yeah so I, I think I also have a, an, an interest in, in in seeing what process works well and what doesn't yeah so in my experience it always so problems in companies uh, or with projects usually have to do i believe either with process or with communication or both so um and that to me means that there is a solution you just need to find it so it's a bit like this detective work and also i see that when processes are very easy um they are, they are very sticky so people usually don't use processes or find ways around process because these are not easy as easy enough. Yeah. Otherwise they would use the process. So, um, and that's also why I thought that whenever I notice people going around the process, it, it's, it's a signal for me to find out why they're doing this and uh, how can I make the process easier to, to make them stick. Okay. So what does, um, obviously you have, there's a lot of things that you have to do within your role, but what does a typical day at the office um, at Jimdo look like for you? Um, a typical day would be that um, I come to the office and first check for Slack if any urgent matters popped up. So um, maybe as a, as a background note that I'm uh, working 30 hours per week. So usually I'm not here in the afternoons. Um, okay. And even though I have an urgent workflow for, for urgent requests, which kind of works without me. Sometimes stuff pops up that needs to be solved in the morning um, that I didn't see um, in the afternoon. So that's what I would, would take a look at first. If any urgent things popped up, then I would see what other new projects popped up and see if the briefings are clear or if I need any more information from stakeholders um, to, uh, to move them to localization. And um, that means I would either reach out uh, to them, or if deadlines are not realistic, then I would also reach out to them. And the remaining stuff, um, I would then move to localization. So the first part of my day would always be coordination of the uh, existing projects. Okay. Um, and then I would look into process improvement. So um, I think there's always room for improvement. So uh, you can always tackle certain parts of the flow. But uh, at this point in time, we 
structured um, teams differently in, in our part of the best company. So we need to adapt processes as well. And um, yeah, so I'm looking at process or documentation. So I think uh, establishing voice and tone and guidelines and glossary is always a challenge. So I think with any documentation, it's always partly outdated. So uh, I try to dedicate regular time for this, uh, even though I have to be honest that we don't have uh, a great deal of documentation in place. So it's more about building it at the moment uh, than keeping it up to date. So you'd say that? Yeah, or sometimes uh, I think uh, the creative part then is investigating uh, stuff that pops up in the collaboration with stakeholders. So I see that stakeholder teams usually adapt very various tools very quickly because they make them speed up. Um, and not all of these tools are, of course, connected to localization software. So I need to find ways around to, um, I think the main goal is avoid copy pasting by all means. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. And some, so my approach at the moment usually is then to see if we can work directly in the tool. Um, just because I see that localization software um, adapts integrations. I think as quickly as you can probably be, but still not quick enough as uh, teams working with the software do it, so. Okay, and are there any specific tools or programs that you use to help streamline your workflow or to help make your colleagues' lives easier? Uh, Slack is a very central tool. So it's not the main tool for task assignment, uh, but as I said, I have an urgent workflow that works in Slack and all conversations also take place in Slack. Um, and I have a couple of shortcuts uh, with the workflows that Slack provides, which speed up a bit this workflow uh, for, for working without me. Uh, and the other software is Jira, even though uh, before it was Trello, uh, I'm not 100% sure at this point in time that I want to continue using Jira, but I'm looking into that at the moment. And of course, uh, the localization software that we use is Phrase. Okay, okay. And um, if you, for people who are, I know at the moment there's a lot of interest in the translation community and localization because it's part of the, the language industry that's, that's growing at a very rapid pace. Um, so for people out there who are listening, who are maybe considering um, a career in localization, what advice would you give to them? What do you think are maybe some, some qualities that are necessary to succeed in the industry? Or what do you think people who are maybe fresh out of university need to be doing in order to, to break in um, to the sector? Um, I think, so I think one of the uh, points uh, that I notice is that the localization industry is very open to from which direction you come. Mm -hmm. so I think theoretically it's very easy to enter because you can come from various sides. Uh, I think crucial is the point of networking. And also it's a very open uh, industry with regards to that. At least that's what I've noticed that people are very open to share insights, very open to connect. Um, and I think this is how you learn. So depending on, there are different roles in the localization industry. So I think uh, the pathway depends a bit on which, which road you want to take. Um, I also have a colleague of mine who's trying to build a very strong profile at the moment uh, with copywriting, translation, and the localization managing part. So I think establishing herself a bit as an all-rounder. And I think this can also make sense when you kind of start moving into this uh, industry and don't really know where to put the focus. So I think then establishing, um, just trying to gather as much experience in various areas, which allows you then to deepen the knowledge in maybe a specific area. So I think that's a very common theme with any any industry probably that you yeah. wanna enter. But I think that's, that's the advice that I would give uh, people how to approach it. So, so first, not scared because it's a very open industry. If you want to enter, then you will definitely find a way using networking so that you can grow uh, your network and connections and then try to gather as much experience and a wide range before you focus on narrowing it down. 
So would you say then, uh, I know I was reading an article yesterday about um, how to break into the localization industry. And um, I can't remember who it was, but a localization manager, a big European company said they didn't think that having a languages background was necessary, but it was preferable. Um, what do you think in your experience? Because obviously you do have a degree in languages. Do you think it would be difficult to, to, to work in localization if you didn't have another language? Yes. Yes, I definitely think so. Um, I don't think that you need to speak the languages uh, that you uh, localize or mm -hmm. that you organize or uh, that you manage as a project. But I think having uh, an awareness and understanding of how languages work and what potential differences and pitfalls might be, that's definitely, definitely necessary. And I see that in connection with teams uh, outside uh, within my company. Um, that it's still difficult to, to have that awareness uh, from, for outside teams, even though our company has people from 45 nations. So they all speak different languages. They all are fluent in e at least English and another language, maybe even more. But still, I think as someone who um, has an interest in language and learn it some way or the other and uses it, there, there is a higher awareness um, or reflection maybe uh, on how languages work. Whereas if you speak different languages in a different setting, you might just be using them and not reflect so much on them. Just how you not reflect very much on your mother tongue until you start learning other languages and see stuff in your own language happening. Yeah. So, no, in, so in other words, I, I completely agree with you. It gives you an appreciation of what, another language is it's more than a language it's a culture it's yeah it's essentially what localization is all about not it's about more than language um the only people probably who i think what might at some point if you start reflecting on it if you live in in another country and see the differences in cultural patterns um that that this might also be helpful so i think it's just it's mainly about establishing this awareness and it's easiest done with learning another language or being in another country. Yeah, I completely agree. Okay, Ike, well, thank you so much for, for your time today. It's been a really interesting interview and I'm sure um, we a lot of people have learned a lot from our conversation today. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for the conversation. It was very nice. Thank you.